Hello students, Michael Sanchez. Uh, welcome to the Irish fiddle class. So we've been working on some pieces and uh, this week we're actually going to be going through a really cool song that was suggested by one of our forum members, Jude. Um, it's a waltz that's um, really fun to play and I'm really excited to teach you guys some tips on how to really optimize the sound. So what I figured I'd do though is kind of structure the class to where we're going to work on some scales always at the beginning because scales is really important to um, improve your skills on any instrument, um, definitely the fiddle and the violin. So the key is though exactly what you do during those scales. So I actually have a resource here um, that's at the shop.theviolincase.com. They have a really good kind of uh, layout of scales. Uh, they call them violin scales, but violin and fiddle are the same instrument. And they have them uh, set up in one octave, two octave, and three octave scales. So what I think I'm going to do is suggest um, that we work on the scale that is associated with the piece that we're going to do. So the piece that we're going to work on today is in G major. So I think we should pick a two octave G major scale. And this resource, <clears throat> if you're watching right now on the site, should be to the right of the video that you're watching. And I'm also going to um, post it in the chat for anybody that's here in the class live. Okay, so here's a two octave G major scale. And what we're going to work on today is really optimizing some grace notes and also sliding. So I want to put some stuff in here that's going to um, really help us work on both intonation and fiddle techniques. So the symbol that I use for slides is basically this symbol, just a dash like that. That uh, indicates that we're going to slide up into the note. So what I want to do is actually have you guys slide every other note in this particular scale. <clears throat> so you're going to slide for one note, and then you're going to not slide for the next, and so on and so forth. And then come down. Um, what I suggest coming down is doing some down sliding. So I want to down slide on any first fingers like that. And a down slide is basically where we take our finger and we kind of slide down towards the open string. So let me just play through the scale and you guys can play along at home um, right now. Um, I know they're labeled as eighth notes, but we don't have to go too fast. Um, I would just suggest going the speed that I go and try to get the slide in there. So I suggest trying to get that kind of droopy speed. And then right when you get to the bottom, that's when you change directions. So try to have that timing down, which is uh, something you guys can work on with this scale. Okay, um, so I would do that. And then let's do something else as well. Um, I'd like to do some grace notes. So for every other note, I'd like to put in at least one grace note. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, erase everything. Okay, so at the beginning, what I want you guys to do is on the second note, I want you guys to put in a note right above it, and then you're going to play down into that particular pitch. You're going to do that on every other note. Okay, so this is what it should sound like. If you want to get even more advanced, I would suggest doing two notes 
uh, two grace notes before the note. So like. Technically, it would be hard on this one. It's like that. So yeah, you can do different uh, grace note uh, combinations. I think that would be great to work on with this G major scale. Uh, raise your hand if that makes sense. Awesome. Great. Hope you guys like that I put some of this in here. I think it's really important to optimize your ability on the fiddle to work on scales and to optimize doing fiddle techniques and also intonation. One more tip for you. Um, I suggest that you guys download this app. It's free. It's called INS Tuner Lite. And to really maximize your intonation, which basically means how in tune you are when you place fingers down, the INS Tuner Lite is really nice because it shows you different colors based on how in tune you are. So if it's green, if the pitch is reading as green, then it's in tune, it's perfectly in tune. To the side of those are yellow indicators, which means that you're kind of in tune, which is actually acceptable. To the right and left of that is orange, which means you should probably make an adjustment to the intonation. And then on the very um, sides of where it's even about to go into the next pitch is red, which means that you're pretty off. So I would really be cautious of how fast you're going if you're not hanging out in between this spot. So try to go as slow as you can to really make sure that you're getting yellow and green markings with your, um, any tuner app would work. But um, using a tuner is a really good idea to, to sound your best. Um, and this is basically where you would work on it. All right, very good. All right, let's go on to our piece. Unless anybody has any questions, feel free to do that at this time. I am open to a question or two as we transition here. Yeah, and let me know how you guys think, what you guys think of this format. So I'm kind of starting off with technique and then kind of going into actual, um, you know, a piece. And this is actually what I do uh, when I teach private lessons. At one point, I had 80 private lesson students a week, and um, that's what we did. We did scales. We did... Uh, like an exercise maybe, and then like a piece. So this is exactly the format that I think is most um, efficient for people to learn and to, to improve their skills. So that's uh, what I decided to do with you guys because um, definitely I think takes having some structure to improve on any instrument, including the fiddle and the violin. Okay, so here we have the um, Oak Pick Waltz, and it's in G. So hopefully you guys have been working on your intonation with the tuner to be able to play this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in some different things, uh, some slides, some grace notes to really optimize the sound of this waltz. Um, we're going to play it kind of slow to start. And I'm not going to put in much of anything uh, the first time. I just want to kind of play it so you guys know what it sounds like as far as what's on the page right now. So we have... <coughs> So that's kind of the beginning. Um, I didn't put any sort of slides. I didn't put, actually, I accidentally put one slide in there. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Um, but that's really what's going to make this sound waltzy and uh, more fun to hear and listen, uh, listen to and to play. So anything that's longer than a quarter note, I suggest putting in a slide. So just like that. That indicates that we're sliding into that note. Anything that's a one, I suggest downsliding in this piece. 
but yeah, definitely sliding adds a lot. I would even slide this fourth finger like that. Let me down slide that. Down, a lot of sliding. Anytime you see these notes, I would suggest slurring those together. As you can see, there's actually no slurs in this whole piece. That's not really a good way to play a waltz. I also would slur anytime you see um, three eighth notes like that. I would say that's a good spot to slur. So this would be a good spot to slur. Anything like that's grouped in threes is a good slur spot. Ah, um, slide there. Okay, so yeah, let me try what I have so far. I would suggest starting up bow as well. just a few other things in there just couldn't help myself <laughs> but yeah anything also that's long I would suggest for broadowing if you guys are capable and um, yeah I mean there's so there's endless possibilities I mean you could slur more notes you could slide more notes um, so it's really open to the interpretation of the, of the musician um, I'll just play it again maybe you guys can kind of see how I can play it differently than what I just did um, so here's maybe a different kind of, I would say, mood to how I play it. Maybe a little faster. in some different rhythms and stuff so that's also very appropriate in any piece to change things up a little bit to make it sound uh, your own all right raise your hand if that makes sense so far and if you have any questions all right cool seems like you guys are liking this format I see Becky asked a question about a scale um, I think this actually would be a fine time to maybe go back and answer your question. So Becky says, when you are practicing the G scale with slides going up, um, are you using the first finger to slide up to A, but coming down, do you slide with the second finger down from B to A? Yeah, so Becky, a down slide is basically where you're starting at the pitch and you're sliding down towards the next pitch in the scale, whereas an up slide is that you're actually starting below the pitch that you're aim towards um, where the slide is marked and you're sliding up into that pitch that's a great question and uh, great I hope that makes sense let me know if it didn't uh, Jude says uh, heads up I post this waltz but the credit goes to Angelica all right thanks Angelica for the uh, suggestion I really like the piece very cool all right Bethany asks, can I play this whole song? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to get to the second half here in just a second. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, screenshot the first part here. And yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on how to just maximize your learning experience throughout this, feel free to let me know at any time. Um, but yeah, I think definitely recording would be smart. All right, so let's get to the second half here. I'm going to erase what's on the screen. 
All right. All right, so let's go ahead and put some markings in. So I would say fourth finger slide on this note, down slide, up slide, use a four there. I like how they do that, that's cool. That's kind of a, a written in down slide almost right here. Slur those together anytime you have groups of three. I would use probably fourth finger there. I would even slide that. Four, three slide, three, four, down slide, up, down, up, written and down slide. How about up and down slide there? <laughs> Make it interesting. End it with a downslide. Okay. All right. Let me play the second half. See what we got so far. should have been actually like that. at least the way it's written but yeah there's so many different ways to play it and change notes and rhythms and all that good stuff all right raise your hand if you guys have any questions so far i'm gonna take a screenshot of the second half so you guys have something to work on and yeah the the format's gonna be basically um weekly doing a different song at a different scale and just um giving you guys some stuff to, to practice so if you guys are interested in, in uh, specific songs, um, post in the uh, forums. There's a, a forum, a fiddle forum. And if you click on Irish class, um, we're kind of hanging out in there as far as posting ideas. That's actually how I grabbed the link to this class. A student posted it. So feel free to do that this week if you like, if you want to learn a specific song for next week. But yeah, what I'm going to do is actually post this on the website. I'll show you guys how that looks in just a moment here. Um, so if I go to, I'm going to erase this on my screen, otherwise that would get really annoying. So if I go to Violin Tutor Pro and I click on Lessons and I click on Intermediate Violin Lessons, I actually posted last Thursday's webinar in here so you guys can count on um, new stuff in these areas. So I have a uh, Wolf Art two to four year experience class, one to two year experience class. Um, and if you click on those, the new format I'm trying to kind of stick to is having the sheet music off to the right, downloadable sheet music, and then the actual class um, and everything that we do right now will be in this video area. So yeah, if, if there's any suggestions you guys have as far as how to improve that experience, let me know. Um, I think the last thing that I'll do though for this class is actually just play through the whole thing. Um, maybe at a little bit faster speed. All right, so I think I'm going to give myself the ability to see the music. Let me go a little bit back farther. There we go. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take the second ending. So for those of you guys that don't know what that means, it's basically that I'm not going to repeat it. Um, this right here refers to a first and second ending. You can play either one. If you play the first one, you go back to the beginning. If you play the second one, you keep going. So I'm going to play the second one and keep going. If that makes sense. Okay. Here we go.
All right, just like that. So I suggest working on this week the scale and optimizing your um, sliding abilities, grace note abilities. Um, we, didn't, we really didn't put a lot of grace notes in here. You could definitely experiment with that. Um, that's always good. But yeah, the structure is to have you guys practice this for this week. This is the assignment. And if you're really feeling um, like you want to really improve, <laughs> I suggest posting a video in the forums. Um, I've probably done about 20 evaluations and they've all been positive, constructive. But yeah, if you guys were to play this piece and um, you know get it to a certain point to where you're feeling like you know you're doing it decent or whatever, um, you go to the forums, um, take your take a video on your can on your phone, nothing fancy, um, you know, post it to YouTube or whatever video site you want, and then you can embed it right in the video feedback area on the forums. And this gives me the ability to, to view you play and give you some technique tips. For those of you guys that are not really sure what you're doing wrong as far as like ways you can improve um, your scales and technique, this would be a great idea for you guys to do if you're not really sure like what you're doing wrong or how you can make a better sound. Um, so like for example, this particular person posted a video play of them playing perpetual motion in A major. So I haven't looked at this one yet, but later tonight I'm probably going to view their video and give him some, con her, sorry, <laughs> some constructive tips on how she could improve. So yeah, um, and then, you know, I think it's a great thing for you guys to, to view my feedback so you can also apply it to your own techniques. And uh, please keep posting questions in the forums. Um, things were a little bit better this week as far as questions, but... Um, as you can see, there's a lot of my name, <laughs> so I'm posting definitely the most. But yeah, if you guys can just ask good questions, um, it would be really appreciated. Uh, we're trying to build the community and just have good Q&A in here. Uh, we're up to about 605 members, so it's pretty cool. All right, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'm going to stop the audio recording at this time and um, chat with some of the people that are actually here today. I encourage you guys to sign up maybe for... Uh, coming here next week. Uh, all the, uh, the Irish classes are on Monday nights at nine, uh, nine thirty. Sorry. Have a great have a great evening.